Apologies for the focus in this video at times, guys. The uh, autofocus struggles with some of the reflective surfaces. So I guess I've got too much time on my hands, uh, you know, when you're able to do stuff like this. So I've got my three generations of hand tech scopes out here, guys. This is the 1008, of course. Great scope. Uh, the handheld, in this case, is the 2C42. And uh, the latest one I've got from Handtech is the uh, is in the T01000 series. It's a T0111. Did I say three ones? One 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 two, Charlie. Right. So it's a two-channel scope and um, uh, a digital multimeter. I did not option the arbitrary waveform generator because I'm a cheap bastard. Yeah, you've had that joke a hundred times. Right, so uh, you can see here I've got my breakout box here, <clears throat> also a cheap little rig, slightly modified, uh, just so I can break out the CAN bus, and uh, I think uh, in my generation car, anyway, there's a 2009 SX4, as some of you are well aware of, uh, the CAN bus is by far the fastest signal in the car, uh, I guess more modern cars likely have entertainment buses and... Uh, I don't know, flex race faster than can probably. Yeah, so we'll get a look at them and uh, we'll see how all, they all compare. Price point wise, I think this was back in the day. I think you can still get this for around, still available, still still for sale out there on the, the interwebs. Um, $135 Canadian or something like that. Eight channel ish. Uh, yeah, great laptop base. So I've got my wee laptop there, as you can see. Handheld, I think this was in and around $185 Canadian or something at the time and uh, this rig here I paid I think it was $244 something like that so it's not a great deal of price disparity so we'll see how they compare okay so just tapped into the Cayenne high and low lines there guys as you can see two channels channels one and two on the 1008 Oops, sorry to the glare let me see if I can maybe oh, maybe a bit better no more set up for uh, on the time base 50 microseconds there um, that's Per division of course unlike on the some other scopes there for the entire uh, screen I heard many people saying that you can't see the CAN bus uh, with a 1008 it's not fast enough um, it's not good enough so okay what we're looking at here isn't exactly uh, the best image right clearly that is too fast of a time base <coughs> but is it usable can you see symmetry? Can you see, uh, uh, you know, some detail with respect to the data packet? Yeah, I can see it, you know. Uh, I can see that it's not shorted to, to high or ground. It's not shorted together, certainly, or you'd have other issues telling you. But um, I think it's usable, you know. Is it professional grade? No, it's not professional grade. Nobody ever claimed that the, the 1008 was a professional grade uh, scope. But is it good enough for uh, an enthusiast, uh, you know, a weekender like myself? Yeah, I still think it's good enough. Is it? Is it yesterday's news? Yeah, it is. You know, it's pretty slow. Um, but again, it, it, you have to consider the product for what it is. We're, we're not comparing this to the la latest Snap-on, all singing, all dancing, uh, you know, scope and scan tool. It is a Hantec 1008. You get what you pay for, right? This has been a great scope. I've learned tons off that scope over the years. And you can see, yeah, you can see the CAN bus with this. There's there's a CAN low and CAN high in front of you, right? So the intention of this video, guys, is not to uh, break down each tool, you know, to uh, finite detail, just to give you a simple comparison. Right, that's the 1008. So here, here's the uh, 2C42. <clears throat> and uh, you can see the image quality is... Uh, there's no comparison, right? You can see the expected uh, squareness to the uh, to the data trains. The symmetry is awesome. Let me just stop it here so we can uh, let me catch a, a decent image. Come on, come on. There we go. That'll do. So yeah, that you can see that's nicely displayed here, right? Far faster uh, machine F refreshes much much quicker. As you can see, how quickly the uh, images are flickering on paging on the. Uh, on the screen um, fantastic uh, I should mention guys all three are capable of um, uh, having a reference um, images brought onto the screen all three are capable of uh, measure and cursor 
right so I'm not going to bother showing you those uh, those functions um, again the one knock on this rig here this is a Canadian core is one inch basically guys right there's the size of the screen it is pretty small not ridiculous but it is pretty small right but a fantastic image um, again for the money what a great rig that music is customizable open the pod bay doors Hal. I'm sorry Dave I'm afraid I can't do that <laughs> and finally there guys there's the uh, T0 I think I'll call it the 1112C it's a bit easier to say that way um, yeah let me just stop the image here so there's the image quality there that you can see on the uh, CAN bus. Again, same voltage and uh, time base settings. Also, very crisp, very sharp, very nice. Very similar, very similar, in fact, to the uh, to the two C42, just uh, considerably larger in scale. Again, just for scaling purposes. Sorry, there. There's the uh, the difference in scale. So, so yeah, one nice. thing I do like about this over the um, over the two C42 guys, as, as I said before, the uh, the buttons can be frustrating at times on the uh, on the handheld uh, hand tech there. And uh, as you can see, like if you want to displace the you know the trigger, it's just a matter of of course sliding it being a touch screen, right? Considerably easier, you know. Let me show you a couple of different time bases, I guess. We bit weird. The uh, I I don't think I'm a fan of the um, symbology with respect to changing the uh, the voltage and uh, and uh, time base. Uh, I would have preferred just an up and down arrow. You know, you want the time base to go down. So in this case, it's you kind of have to look at the graphic and see do you want to see the waveform smaller. You know, in which case it it increases the time base, or do you want to see it the wave larger? So it's just kind of a different way of wrapping your head around it, I guess, right? But for me, it's a bit weird. Again, the waveform smaller, you know, goes to a, a higher voltage. I'm not making the trigger now because I've adjusted this, but there you go. So anyway, that's good enough for comparison. Um, it's the first time I've actually used this on the CAN bus here, guys. So yeah, I'm fumbling a wee bit to a degree with the, 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 the functions, to be quite honest. But I guess that's good enough for that for now. Um, the 1008 kind of first generation uh, with a laptop still a great rig but has its limitations because it's getting older of course and the the 2c42 or the 2000 series handheld hand tech scopes fantastic right again we bit frustrating with the buttons at times smaller screen so what you learn how to deal with all of that right and uh, the new rig here too early a pass judgment on but so far so good as far as the clarity of image is concerned i think you know Oh, one thing here, <clears throat> let me stop this. There's a wee bit annoying on the hand tech as well. They absolutely refuse to put the scaling on the uh, on the Y axis, you know, uh, as far as what voltage you're looking at. But I guess you can you can always bring in the uh, the cursors, of course, and uh, you know you can if you want to see what levels you're at, you can bring in the cursors. Of, of the signal uh, but I would have preferred the scaling on the side still um, I know some other guys have found that a bit annoying as well but you know you live with the constraints that the, the designers see fit to implement right okay this thing we'll call that good that's it boys cheers